Hi and welcome. My name is Thijs Waanders and I am a technical consulting manager here at Cognigy. Today I want to show you how the Cognigy Jira integration works. What we see here is a Cognigy flow and we see a number of custom nodes that are labeled Jira. And we see that we have an extract ticket and we have a get ticket summary node. This is a basic Cognigy flow. So the first question is where do these nodes come from? And the answer to that is that there's an in integration framework here in Cognig that we can access. And what we see here is that there's a whole bunch of integrations for different systems. And these are well, extensions, if you will, that can be uh, found on our GitHub repository. These are um, these are not exclusive. These are these are open source. You can use them with Cognig. Uh, the code is open source, so you can modify them. You can create your own extensions. And the reason we have this is because it makes it way easier for the business developer, or so let's say for the business user to develop conversational AIs without having to manually create HTTP requests uh, each time. So let's see how this one works. The first node that we have here is the extract ticket node. So the way this works is we can create a module, we can use a module, in this case we can use the uh, Jira module that I used, and I use the extract ticket node here, which makes sure that in whatever sentence I, I use, as soon as I mention a ticket number, that it extracts, that it finds this ticket number and it extracts the, the actual ticket number. Um, right? So this could be something like, um, hey, my name is Bob, the weather is nice. Oh, and by the way, the ticket number that I'm looking for is ABC-123. And this node, all it does is it makes sure that this this last part, ABC-123, that that's extracted so that we can reuse it. So what then happens is Cognigy uses an intent detection mechanism here to decide what the user wants to do. And this is machine learning driven. So let me quickly show you how that works. We have a number of intents, or in this case, only one intent. And this is a pre-trained model where I basically said, okay, how can a user ask for the status of a ticket? Like, how, how does one do this? And of course, this is language specific. In this case, it's an English uh, example. You do the same in German or Spanish or Korean, right? You, you'd give it some example sentences like, hey, status please, what is the status of? What is the status of my ticket? And this way, the bot will understand different inputs without us having to prepare every every possible combination that a user, you know, user utterance could, could follow. Like, there's no way of, you know, um, of of pre-programming all of that, you know, this is this is where we use machine learning and AI. And, uh, AI. So as soon as this case was found, they say, okay, well, let me look that up for you. It just gives a small heads up. It then checks, hey, was a ticket found at the start, right? Remember this extract ticket node. It says, hey, if a ticket exists, then we go up, and only then do we do a query to Jira where we say, okay, the ticket is the ticket that was found. This is a this is a variable from the context, right, that was stored. So at the beginning here, if it finds a ticket here, it will store that and call it ticket. And then here, we use the same ticket. And then we say, okay, well, we need to use the secret, so the credentials that we, um, that we created for that. And we want to store it under a property called summary. We just want to say, okay, whatever information we get back, we want to store it in the context so that the bot can use this information and then output it to the user. So that's what this flow does. Lastly, it says, okay, the status of, again, the variable ticket is whatever it found in terms of status. So let's give this a quick try. We do this by going to the interaction panel at the top right. Again, this can work for voice bots, for telephony, for Amazon Alexa, for Microsoft Teams or Skype. But this is just a debug panel that we can use to test this logic before we publish it to an actual channel. Right? So in this case, I say, uh, what is the status of, and I actually prepare the ticket in a sample environment, so I know that this ticket exists. So say, what is the status of COG-1? So now it says, let me look that up for you. And then it says the status is in progress. So we see here to the left what happened. First off, it found a ticket. And so it found this little piece here, COG-1. And it then found an intent. So it, it, it understood that this, what is the status of COG-1? That this means that the user wants to find a ticket status, right? It, we could also add further functionality here, further things that the bot could do, like maybe, hey, I want to talk to a human, right? This would be a different case here in the same flow. 
it then says, hey, let me look that up for you, which it did, right? We see that here. And it then apparently found a ticket, so this COG-1 extraction was successful, and it then looked into JIRA, and then dynamically used the information, the status of ticket, COG-1, is in progress. So let's see and look on the info what happened here. We see that there's now a context. We see that there's a summary with a ticket information, Cochrane G service is the project, and we see that the status is in progress. So let's go back to the chat. Let's now go to JIRA, and this is the sample ticket that I created. Let's say the status is not in progress, but it's done. You know, for whatever reason, this ticket was closed. Um, let's go back to the bot to see if this works. So again, I'll now re-enter this text and say, what's the status of CAG-1? Click on send. And it says, again, let me look it up for you. And this time it says the status of CAG-1 is done, right? Because we updated the uh, ticket. And in the same way, we can also create a ticket, right? So what we can do is we can create a new intent here by going to the intent menu. This will be different from, you know, the ticket status. This will be something that we would have to retrain. So let's do that real quick. Say we want to have a new machine learning intent. This time we say it, uh, we call it create uh, create ticket, and I usually use this naming convention. You don't have to. I, I like you know separating it in case we have more languages. So one way of saying it could be like, I have a problem. You know, people would not typically say, Hey, I want to create a ticket. They they typically come and and, and contact customer service if they have a problem. Maybe say I uh, want to uh, um, create a, a ticket. Can you help me uh, create? Um, create a ticket, uh, new ticket, please. Maybe we say, need help um, and problem, need help, something like this, right? Now we save this and now the intent trainer says, oh, something changed, you need to retrain the model. So I go to train intents and what happens now is we train a, a neural network, a machine learning model that can hopefully also detect variations of those sample sentences because that's what the machine learning is about. So if I now go to test, I can actually test this, and I can say, well, let's try a variation. Let's say something like um, need um, um, ran into a problem and need help. Let's enter this and says, well, it's 98% sure that what we want to do, that the user intent is create ticket, right? And which makes sense. It's not 100% matched with the example sentences, but it's it's close, right? And that's what we can use. Um, in the other, you know, on the other hand, we can also say, well, let's have a look at the ticket status. So you can say, like, uh, any news on the status of, well, let's say this, for example. And then it's 95% sure, you know, that this is about ticket status. What happens if I leave out the word status? Any news on, right? You could test it. And it's still sure that it is about ticket status, but not as sure anymore, right? So maybe this is something that we want to you know, add to the status here. Maybe say like uh, any news um, so that it knows that the word news and also this, this sentence structure is not just about individual words, right? It's actually like a statistical uh, model um, that this is also relevant. Again, so we retrain it. And now what we can do is we can go back to our flowchart and we can create a case for the creation of a new ticket because that's what we want to do. So we say, well, we want to add the creation, uh, create ticket intent and uh, let's just say that once this, this intent is triggered, we want to actually create a ticket. So we get, go to mod, uh, modules, we go to JIRA, and we say, well, um, create a JIRA ticket, like so. Now we click on this and we see, oh, it's a lot of information. So it needs the secret, so the credentials, um, but it also needs a summary. So let's just, you know, we can do this with dynamic information because typically we would ask the user like, hey, what's wrong? Could you give me a summary of your problem? And then we repeat that here. But let's just hard code this for now and say, I have a, a problem with my uh, computer. Uh, or maybe say, cannot log in. That's like more of a summary. And then we have a project ID. This is something that we as, as the bot owners need to uh, uh, have, right? We, we need to notice, and I think this is the, uh, the JIRA uh, ID. Then we can even create an epic name, a description. Let's just say uh, ran into a login problem. We can add an assignee, and we need to say like, hey, where, where does this um, need to be stored in the chatbot context? 
it's what a con context story so that we can say something about it maybe it worked out maybe uh, creating a ticket ran into an error then we want to be able to output that to the user so basic information we store it now and let's see if this works let's say you know I, I uh, ran into a uh, problem let's say we do this so now it thinks long and hard it says oh no we have a problem the epic name was not defined right so this is something that the ticket uh, that the ticket needs so what we need to do now is we need to go here into um, into the test environment here and then I think that the epic name is Cognitive service but I'm not sure so I'm just gonna try it I'm not a Jira expert and let's see if this works now so I click on it again and this is how we approach this this is how we can debug it now we see it's green so it did something right and then we look here and said oh yeah there's a new ticket that was created you know it has this idea ID and this is the key so it called it CUG-2 and there's no further information on it of course we can ask for information so we can use the same bot and say hey what's the status on CUG-2 dash two because that's the new one and then hopefully it will find this and it says well the status is to do which makes sense because we just created a ticket now if we go here into Jira we go to open issues and I'm not even sure if they're listed under my open issues no they're not right because uh, they're not assigned to me so I need to go to all issues I guess yeah and now we see that CUG, CUG2 was created and it's called cannot log in just like we you know we entered into the bot so I want to wrap this up now. Um, obviously, what we can do is we can now start asking the users uh, some questions. You know, we can say like, well, let's create a, a question or a yes, no question. And maybe we say like, hey, what is your, uh, you know, what is your email? Or maybe we say like, hey, how long has the problem been occurring? Or maybe you can, you know, describe the problem in more detail. And then we collect all this information before actually creating the ticket in Jira. But the principle is the same, right? We can fetch information from Jira. We can create tickets in Jira without having to write a single line of code and lastly we can of course say like well you know let's publish this workflow on any of these channels let's create a web chat or let's publish it on Amazon Alexa or Microsoft Teams and that's the real power of the platform we build a flow once we have the logic once and we can then publish it wherever we want so thank you very much. Um, please feel free to reach out to me um, or the Cognitive Sales team in case you have any questions. Thank you.